Thank you. I'm here to explain why slow is important. I won't do it entirely slowly, but the point is that we need to respect, value, understand all the aspects of slow which actually makes for a sustainable, for a resilient, for a healthy, well-being, welcoming community. And that, I would suggest, is increasingly important because in this day and age of increasing globalisation, the cities are getting bigger. We're moving from a town to a city to a major metropolis to conurbations. Sydney, Wollongong, Newcastle, all joining together. I remember when those beautiful little beach, beachside towns up and down the coast were separate, distinct, <coughs> unique. Now, suburban housing just continues on. We moved a few years ago from when literally 50% of the world's population had moved into cities. The forecast is, by 2050, that will be 70% of the world's population will be in cities. And I know from some of my teaching work at universities, places like China, the discussion is, how do you get 20 new cities of a million people or more by 2020? The scale and the speed is increasingly rapid. And that's a couple of important points there. Scale and speed. Because think about it, we're humans. We find it much easier to relate at a small scale. I can talk to you in this fine room because there is a limited number of people here. I can see intelligent, bright, educated, interested people. <laughs> if it was 3,000 people in an auditorium, it would be much harder to give this kind of talk. We humans respond to scale. The same with speed. When we take time, as a few of our speakers have already indicated, time to smell the roses, time to consider better food, time to consider our personal role in life, then we're on a very positive path. And that is increasingly important as the world population grows, the work pressure comes to work harder, work longer, work smarter. When we look at all those internet connections, our phones endlessly ringing, the fact that there's the anticipation more and more that we're in a connected world and 24-7, we're there. I've got to ask, to whose benefit is that truly? Is it to ours individually? Is it to ours collectively? And most particularly, what does it do for our communities? Because... Hopefully, certainly in this milieu, we're living in a community, or perhaps several communities. A physical one, a virtual one, a family one, a friends. A, we have different communities that hopefully are intertwined, overlap, interlocked, if they're rich and positive. And that's ultimately what human beings, cross-culturally, always have had and continue to need. And that is not necessarily what is presented in a fast-paced, big-scale, developing globalisation. What matters is to be slow. And by that, I'm not meaning slow and stupid, or slow and slow on uptake. I'm talking about the values that underpin the notion of slow. Let me give you a couple of, couple of examples, and let me also introduce the notion of balance. Because in all what I'm talking about, balance is important. A seesaw, balanced in the middle, we all know the fun of being heavier than the kid at the other end. But what is happening in our society, I suggest, is that it is increasingly overloaded at one end of corporate globalisation. The weight, the, the push to meet every day international, national Local demands, globalisation is huge. And that is the cultural pathway we were on, and you and I aren't going to change it. That is happening. But to bring balance back, we have to look at the other side. How the small, local, resilient, creative solutions 
can actually restore balance to ourselves, to the people we love and care about, to our community and the broader sphere. And this is the point, bringing things back into balance. And that is what slow movement is all about. The slow movement. It started effectively in terms of national and international consciousness with slow food back in 1986. Just as here at Katoomba Blue Mountains, we've managed to avoid having McDonald's on the highway three times over. Many of us are very proud about that. I'm <laughs> pleased to see people shaking their head in the audience. You also are proud about that? Yes. yes. Excellent. The point is that we don't want to be addressed, responded to, identified with multinational fast food corporations. 1986, Carlo Petrini in Rome was aghast at the thought that they could put up a McDonald's near the Spanish steppes. A major tourist destination for the world visitor to come to Rome. Did they come to see McDonald's? I very much doubt it. So here's the one that's initiated with the slow food movement initiation. And within three years, they had an international manifesto. They had 15 countries, mostly around Europe, signing up for, for international slow food with local convivians. And between in the last 25 years, 24 years, it's grown to around 150,000 people in 150 countries of the world, recognising and respecting slow, slow food. And by that, and Elliot here is the local convivium president, it is to do with what is local produce. It is produce which relates to the seasons, to the soils, to the, the quality of the atmosphere and the, the, the water that is available. It is about tasting food, not just supermarket anonymous flown in from wherever, but the local produce. Taste education. Here's Jody before me talking about, very simplistically in terms of her world of chocolate, but the difference of different producers, ethical production, small is good, and understanding and respecting that regional difference. That's what slow food's about. And of course, manifestation, you know, the uh, kitchen gardens, school education, chook runs in local primary schools, all of these things to get kids involved in their local food, but what's it also teaching them at the same time? It's the value of personal involvement. It's the connectedness of working together for a common aim. It's learning skills that will carry them into the future that might become increasingly important under a globalised world. Because, you know the proverb, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And as we've seen internationally, when even a few weeks ago in Sydney, one power station went out when one person obviously made a mistake. That led to another three inner city power stations all failing. And for several hours, 60,000 people had no electrical power. Highways were closed down, tunnels, bridges. Fundamental. And of course, this raises a point about breaking down to local to regional. The power and the strength of local and regional as distinct from worshipping the god of speed and scale and supposedly efficiency. It's wrong. So, slow food. But there's many other slows. There is slow art. Appreciating what the intent of the artist was. Looking at the, the, the materials, the things behind, not treating art as a commodity to be quickly glanced at, to open your wallet and move on. There is slow travel, obviously a very powerful, effective one, where you don't take the quick package tour flying, zipping around by plane with all its consequences for our carbon and our world, but travelling slowly, using local transport, meeting and understanding local people, appreciating cultural differences, responding, interacting. Key words. There is a notion of slow parenting as an antidote to being a hyper-parent or a helicopter parent, hovering, organising your child to do this, 
before they race off for the violin lesson and then off to the football or whatever it might be. The idea of let children grow at a child's pace with that understanding that they kind of know what they need and they might become a more rounded, balanced person as a result if you allow them to a childhood. Slow. So all of this has led in 1999 to chitter slow. Chitter slow, slow towns. This was when four mayors in Italy got together and no doubt lamented the changes in their towns as with speed and scale and development. Orvieto, which is currently the world headquarters and a world heritage town. Gri in Chianti, Bra and Positino. The four mayors got together and said, we want to gain find means for people to understand what we have in our towns and our village. We want people to, to value the quality of life that we currently have, that we don't want swamped or overrun by the everyday and the average. So these four men, four men, as it was, four mayors, set up the body of Chittislow, which now is in 27 countries and 176 towns or small cities. Must be below 50,000 people. And folks, how many of you realise that you're now here, Katoomba Blue Mountains, we were the second chitter slow in Australia. How many people understand that? Oh, about half. <laughs> and this occurred because back in 2006, Anne Elliott, Janet and others, we all got together and said, we've stopped McDonald's three times over. But we just don't want to be there protesting and stopping and preventing. We want good things to happen in our town. We want positive things to happen. We're not here to prevent <coughs> development per se. I, as an architect, particularly. <laughs> but the point was that we want things that meet us in our terms, that respond to the specialness of our place, that have minimal environmental or ecological impact, that have maximum community benefit, in the most genuine sense. Places which are distinctive. Places which give resilience. Places which meet the needs of this community. Not the multinational corporations. So to do that, in 2006, early 2007, as is required for all international Chittislow towns, there is a very detailed ruling accreditation procedure. They have six key principles and nearly 60 policies where every town or every region that applies has to answer and provide evidence. And the interesting thing to us was that it was a very Eurocentric approach in that initially they assumed that you're a town or a village surrounded by agriculture. And here in the Blue Mountains, what do we have? National parks, World Heritage National Natural Environments. We don't have a lot of agriculture. We can't, we don't. But what do we have that is very distinctive? Think about it. World heritage for the eucalypt, for the ecology, unique in the world. We have been the first inaugural New South Wales City of the Arts. We have cultural produce. We don't have the foodstuffs as readily available, although they are within 100 miles, but in immediately around Katoomba, Upper Blue Mountains, we have the most wonderful collection of people at Varuna, as in writers. We have visual artists, graphic artists, photographers. We have writers of all kinds. We have a very large creative community. That is our strength. And of course, if you're looking at marketing, if you're looking at tourism, if you're looking at unique, that is something we need to build and develop. And Chitterslow was the means for us all, those in the committee and others, to start to bring it together and to make that public announcement that we are special, we are unique, we are distinctive, and yes, we meet all the criteria in terms of energy and environment. Infrastructure and transport, the use of cars, the use of bicycles, recreation, tourist signage access. Our towns and landscape, we have heritage. We have controls about the character, what is special and unique. We have productive landscapes and 
developing quality in our public realm. The quality of everyday life, the community services, medical services, universities at our doorstep, not quite here yet, although people have continued to work on that, but we have the International Hotel Management School. Universal access for people of all abilities or lesser abilities. School gardens where are well developed. Consultation processes where our council has been very good in the last five or eight years in developing that. Thank you, Rosemary. And livability indicators, making the way we can live here, Katoomba, Upper Blue Mountains, as being of the highest quality. When it comes to economy and industry, we have a regional economy that is reasonably strong. Artisan and skills, once again, connected to our creative base. Teleworking, ecotourism, tourism provision generally. All of these things are our strengths and we were able to answer them. Culture, heritage and social cohesion. To some degree, that's a result of everything I've talked about. Respecting the uh, traditions of indigenous people. They've been here three, four, five thousand years before white man. Recently we've celebrated 200 years of white man's crossing of the mountains. And there was an indigenous component. One might have said it could have been stronger. We have significant events where Gatuba Street closes for winter magic. Is it 50,000 people come? One of the biggest community events anywhere in Australia in one street. All started in the mid 1990s, along with the music festival. Now there's an Art Deco festival. There's more and more things to celebrate. We have a history. We are inclusive. So the point of Chittislow, slow town, is the fact that we have a quality of life. Just as a snail represents moving slowly with determination to a particular destination, carrying on its back its shelter, its protection. It is a very useful symbol. And here, Katoomba, Blue Mountains, we have that. We have livability. We have community well-being. We have good community development activities. We have respect for what has passed, and we have hope and anticipation for a more sustainable, more community-based future, where quality of life is what truly matters. Increasingly, this localization of Chittislow matters in a globalizing world. Thank you.